Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to plot stress strain curve. So in this Excel file, the first column is representing uh, the extension, the extension of the crosshead or the extension of the machine. The second column would be force and the third column would be the extensometer, which gives us the strain value. We use extensometer to get more accurate measurement of the strain and uh, the fourth column channel is not attached to anything so the values uh, are not making any sense. My first step is to convert these volt values into uh, units that we can understand pound, inch, kilonewton. Uh, so let me uh, name this column displacement and the units would be inch here. Uh, I know the setting of the machine, each volt is representing 2.5 inch. So I multiply it by 2.5 inch. And that's the same thing for others. Either I can drag it down, going all the way, or uh, I could select Control, Shift, and End. Go all the way down, go to Home, Fill, Down. So it fills up the whole column for me and the unit is inch uh, here the second would be uh, fourth for me the unit that I'm gonna use is pound or we can use keep kilo pound again according to the setting of machine we know that we used uh, one uh, 10,000 load cell so each volt is corresponding to 10,000 pound or 10 kilo pound if you are using keep so I just multiply by 10. Same thing here I'm pressing control shift and end and then I go to uh, fill up my column. So now this is the force displacement so I can plot force displacement uh, go to insert I use scatter plot and that's my fourth displacement. I usually don't uh, select the title, we use captions in reports. Here we want to make sure they are legible. So I usually choose uh, Times New Roman, font 12. Same thing for here. And the default is gray, I always change it to black. So it makes it looks better and let's go to format axis so there are scientific I will change it to number so you can see it looks better already same thing here I can use either number or it's a, a displacement so number would be fine for a strain sometimes I report it in percentage I want axis so that would be the displacement and the unit is inch, always use unit and the y axis would be force and the unit is kip, kilo pound. Same thing, I change it to times new roman. displacement everything looks good so at the end you can see these are these uh, data points they're not part of the material property after you stop the machine so the, the force goes to zero and the displacement stays there uh, so I can remove these data points towards the end I can go to edit so it goes to 2300 probably I can use 200 here 2200 remove some of the data. Now we can go and see how our stress strain curves or force displacement looks like. And this is our plot. And one other thing that we can do, let's see if everything good, is to copy our data, uh, move our chart into a separate sheet so I can find it easier. Force displacement.
that's our force displacement curve. So force displacement uh, does not give us any mechanical property because both force and displacement are function of the geometry. We would like as engineers, as mechanical engineers to convert our force displacement plots to stress strain curve. Uh, the only thing that we can get from force displacement is the slope that which gives us this, uh, the stiffness. So not elastic modulus, but, but stiffness. So the next step I'm gonna plot a stress strain curve. So here I'm gonna call it engineering stress. Engineering stress is based on the initial cross-sectional area and that's what we have access to. Injury strain for the strain to calculate the stress is just force divided by the area. So I need to have the initial area. Initial area. So initial area is simply the initial width multiplied by the initial thickness. So if I go to my Excel file with the dimension, I'm dealing with um, specimen nine. So I start with initial width multiplied by initial thickness so let's go back to the previous one test 9 equal uh, would be this you can see you can link the excel files and also multiply by the thickness this value and the uh, unit is inch squared and then I have the initial length or the gauge length which I already know is uh, 2 inch so to calculate the stresses that would be force which is in kilopound divided by the area I don't want the area to the area cell to change so I put it in dollar sign and same thing control shift and well let's do something else I think here I need to go all the way down to 2000 so I'm expanding my equation for all the data point I have around 2000 data points so the equation will expand till the end Same thing for engineering strain. Uh, I will have displacement divided by two inch, and the unit would be it would be unit less. So control shift. Uh, so this one doesn't work either. Let's try control shift and that's better. We go to home fill and down so I have my displacement and enduring stress so remember this the unit here is KSI and the unit here is unit less but we are dealing with inch so inch over inch now I want to plot stress and strain curve go in that I'm inserting a plot for a stress and strain curve I'm just so we are gonna select data. Let's call it stress strain curve. The x values are strain and the y values are the stresses. So here delete this okay that's our stress and strain curve I'm gonna move that also to a to new chart so a new sheet I call it stress and strain here I do the same thing I don't want a title I use captions in, in my report uh, I modify the font 
name and size, change the color to black, same thing here. So we do the same procedure that we did for uh, force displacement curve. So I format my axis, I go to the number, uh, that's good. Here we are dealing with the string, so we could do percentage here. And sometimes percentage will give us uh, more information. Uh, I need access titles. Here would be a string, or I can write it in Jiring string. That would be more complete than the unit of the inch or inch. And let me correct the font and name and size here as well. That would be my insurance stress. And the unit is KSI. Okay. So here there are some data points that, again, after we stop the machine, uh, the force goes to zero. So it really doesn't uh, say much about the material property, but it says. Uh, so we need to remove that. I will remove these data points. So if I go to edit, I can do 2200 the same way for forces. As long as I capture the maximum value, then that will be fine. So here, if you select a data point, you could select data. Uh, you could um, add a data label. So that would be your maximum uh, stress uh, if you want to find it visually but we could go to our data and then find the maximum stress here if it is this column is my stresses I call this ultimate tensile strength here I'm gonna find maximum value of this column That would be the maximum stress, which is my strength, and the unit again is KSI. So if I go back here, I can find yield. Yield is if you draw a parallel line to our elastic modulus at 0.2% uh, strain or 0.002 strain, we can find a value. Here it would go somewhere here and we find our yield. Uh, if you pay attention, you can see at the beginning of the curve the software started recording data while the test had not started. So these values technically should be removed at the beginning of the curve. So we can have the stress of strain curve starting from the zero. So we should shift the data to the zero point. Then we would find stresses. Uh, the strain value at 0.2% uh, and draw a parallel line to our elastic modulus slope and that would give us our yield strength and the maximum value would be ultimate strength. To find the modulus we have an extensometer data that we did not use. Uh, so I can use this column probably for extensometer. Extensometer gives us the strain directly and we use it because it's more accurate for us. I need to change it from uh, volt to uh, strain value. So I need, according to the setting of our machine, I need to multiply it by 0 0.05. Nope, it doesn't work this time. So I'm going to manually drag it. I have to select it again. 9.05, again this 0 0.05 comes from the setting of our machine. And the extensometer will give us the exact value of the strain. It's more accurate, that's why we are not relying on, on the machine uh, strain and then we are gonna have another measurement. But one thing about mechanical extensometer is that we place it 
at the beginning of the test and we immediately remove it because we don't want our extensometer to be damaged when the specimen fails. Uh, so the only the initial value of the extensometer are, are valid and then after that uh, the values are not really valid. So now I'm going to plot extensometer which is the unit of strain so I don't need to divide it by the original length because already the values are based on the strain. And I'm going to plot another stress strain curve but this time only for uh, the initial part. You can see after we remove the extensometer the data is all over the place so we need to modify our data. We are only interested at the initial stage. So let me select here from I'm gonna say 100 to 300 or 400. Do the same thing here from 100 300 data and we'll see how our stress strain curve or the initial part of the stress strain curve looks like for us. So that's that's more reasonable. And I can move that as well, move chart and call this modulus in a new sheet so I can easily find it. Uh, for this one. This is just again a stress strain curve. I'm interested only the in the slope. So I'm gonna add a trend line here. Go to more options. Uh, format trend line. I want to display the equation, so that gives me the slope. And this is the slope of a stress strain curve. If the stresses are in KSI. The slope is also in KSI because the strain is unitless. So this gives me 39 uh, to the power of uh, times 10 to the power of 6 uh, PSI or 39 uh, mega SI. And uh, that would be the slope and that would be the elastic uh, modulus. We use extensometer because it's uh, more accurate. If we go down to our measurement here, we have the initial and final uh, width and thickness. So we can find the initial area, the final area, and then we can find uh, the area reduction. Or we can find also the elongation, which is the final length minus the initial length divided by the initial length. That would give us the elongation. So from this table, uh, we can find the area reduction and we can find uh, the elongation uh, from our stress strain curve we can find elastic modulus yield strength from here we can find yield strength and ultimate strength and this is only for one strain rate you can plot multiple uh, in the same figure and then compare them and then the only difference is that you need to have uh, a legend for different uh, plots as well here we have we have only one but if you have more than one plots, uh, Excel automatically uh, names them.